Hi, this is Clayton with MindOfIt'sOwnDesign.com. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the question that I've called the corundum conundrum, um, which is what is the difference between a ruby and a sapphire? Is and the question really is why is it that a sapphire can be a ruby but a ruby can't be a sapphire so to answer that question you have to know what the base material is in both cases they share a common crystal which is called aluminum oxide al203 so that's two aluminum three oxygen and in that ratio this makes a, if you have a material that has multiple small crystals, this is a, a, called a polycrystal, and aluminum oxide would be white in that case. But if you have a single crystal, and when you ha talk about gems like rubies or sapphires, people usually, if not always, are talking about a single crystal of the material in question. So when you have a single crystal of Al203 or aluminum oxide it ends up being totally transparent. Uh, this is a similar material that actually has the addition of nitrogen but uh, the crystal for aluminum oxide is similar to this in transparency and it doesn't have color. But rubies are known for their vivid red color. Why is that? And sapphires, people say, are usually blue. But in fact, sapphires, they start clear and they can be any number of colors from yellow to blue to pink to orange to purple and some reds that aren't quite ruby red. Um, that could be also a sapphire now but if it if it has the distinct color of being red ruby red as people I think can recognize it would be the presence of the element metal chromium now, if you have a trace amount of a metal inside of this ceramic crystal what happens? Well, the, the most impressive and noticeable thing is you get a drastic color effect. So you could have only a couple percent chromium that replaces the aluminum and the aluminum oxide in the lattice, the crystal, where the, the three-dimensional arrangement of the elements that make up a crystal. And you're going to get this ruby red color. Now, if you if you're talking about why our sapphires blue, uh, that's partially the same effect, except that sapphires have iron and titanium as their trace elements. And they both create this color by changing the crystal and changing the electron configuration in the vicinity of the atoms. But in a more abstract way, um, you actually can get effects from missing atoms. So in order to get, have everything be charge balanced, there might be an aluminum missing, or you might have an iron or you might have an iron or titanium or chromium atom extra, but sometimes you have atoms missing. And in the case of the blue sapphires, that missing atom can actually have an effect on the color as well. Um, so, in conclusion, I guess the, oh, of course, corundum, I should have said at the beginning, is the mineral that you, when you mine from the earth, you can get this mineral, corundum. That's another name for aluminum oxide. And if you have a single crystal 
of that material, that is what's called a sapphire. So the sapphire is really pertaining to it being a single crystal, whereas aluminum oxide could come in a polycrystal, which is white, or a single crystal without any dopant or impurities, which would make it clear. And if you have chromium, that makes it red. Uh, you have iron and titanium, that'll make it blue. And since it's a natural thing that's from the mined from the earth, you can really have a wide variety resulting in a wide array of different color sapphires. And really the difference between a sapphire and a ruby is just a technical naming difference because they're both really sapphires. And they're both, if they're found in multiple crystals or polycrystals, they're called corundum. So I hope that answers the question of the corundum conundrum. Check out mindofitsowndesign.com and please like and subscribe.